I've got some mid 70s vintage uh, test equipment on the bench for repair. This is a HP 1335A XY monitor. It's got a little four and a half inch screen in a massive cabinet. Looks like it's about 24 inches deep. Very old school technology in this one. It looks a lot like an oscilloscope, but it's it's actually a dedicated XY only display. There's no retrace circuitry or anything in it. It does have some variable variable persistence functions, but I won't be using any of that for what I'm doing with it. At least I don't think I will be. But right now, all this is doing is lighting up the power light, so I'm going to take it apart and see what's wrong. Alright, here's a look at the inside. This thing is definitely high quality in its time and it was probably pretty darn expensive when it was new. Inside this cage is all the high voltage components. I think this is the variable persistence board. It's mainly TTL chips on here. Power transformer and filter caps underneath. Power supply and I believe some of the blanking circuitry is on here. Blanking amplifier. got a really large uh, electrostatic deflection CRT in it like any other oscilloscope of the period would use. They've even got the pins labeled so that's kind of nice. And I'm glad to see that it appears they've got this configured for positive analog blanking which is what I'm looking for got the option for TTL and also negative analog. <clears throat> Remote control socket of some sort here. Voltage selection. A little power switch. Let's see if I can flip this thing around here. These appear to be the deflection amplifier boards all plugged into sockets for easy servicing and in fact the wires are socketed as well everything appears to be modular on this and uh, should be nice and uh, serviceman friendly the first thing I'm going to do is start checking power supply voltages because I'm all but certain something's going on down here on this board I've got my meter set up here power switch is on and we've got lots of test points to check here Let's see here it's hard to do this and hold the camera we have a negative Let's see if I can read this here okay plus five do we have anything on plus five <laughs> nothing minus twelve and a half that one's working about the plus 15 nothing How about the minus 15 that one's working uh, looks like this is plus 158 nothing lots of missing voltages now all the fuses, I ohmed them out and they're all good so I'm going to go a little bit farther back and take a look at these rectifiers. Well just like I suspected it looks like there's a couple of bad bridge rectifiers in here. I had AC voltage coming in and nothing coming out and the fuses aren't blown so I'm all but certain that these rectifiers have just died of old age and temperature fluctuations and stuff. Now I do have the schematic, but it's a little old and hard to read, so I'm going to take note of where each of these wires are going so I can disconnect them and pull this board out. Well, I've got the board removed now, and it looks like I'm going to have to take these filter caps off to replace the bridges because they're directly underneath them. So I wrote a note on the board here which cap goes in which spot for these two smaller ones because they're completely, completely different ratings. And I don't want to get them backwards because one of them's a high voltage cap and one's a low voltage cap. This one's 40 volts, this one's 300 volts. Definitely don't want to get those reversed. Well, it was a nightmare to 
remove those old capacitors because they were the four leg type and soldered on both sides no matter what I did I just could not get them to unsolder properly but um, I ended up using some smaller caps I had to use a pair of 47 microfarad capacitors in parallel for that that original 90 microfarad I didn't have anything else it was really the proper value and uh, I think it'll work though I ended up mounting the bridges slightly up off the board so they get a little bit of ventilation especially this one this this one was obviously getting hot but I'm gonna put this board back in and and uh, see if anything different happens this time around all right let's see what happens I'm gonna bring this up nice and easy on the variac with the 100 watt light bulb in series in case there's anything else wrong I don't want to wreck the power transformer so I've got the meter on the plus 158 test point. I'm going to see if this thing is going to work. I guess it would help to have the meter on DC. Okay, I've got four volts on there so far. Only got about 30 volts going in, so boy, that jumped up quick. I forgot this has uh, has some regulator circuits in it. All right, we're at 50 volts, give or take what's coming out of the you know the light bulb dropping, and then 70 on that test point very very slight glow from the pilot light on there let's see what I got on my other voltages just out of curiosity and the plus 15 is reading about six and a half the what is this one the plus 5 I think is it reading at 3.4 the minus 12 is reading at negative 5 go back over to the plus 158 and bring this up some more and the light bulbs not even coming on that's a good sign that there's no shorts I gotta keep my eye on the uh, picture tube because I don't want to burn a uh, spot in the center of the screen if it does turn on a hundred volts going in should be up high enough that things should start working but I'm not really seeing anything here I wonder if uh, oh there it is Sweet. Leave that leave that down and bring this up the rest of the way. Alright. Sweet. Boy, that thing can make a really, really sharp point in the tube. Really sharp. And I haven't even messed with the focus. Man. Well, I'm going to leave that as dim as I can get it to where I can still see it until I get a signal put into it. But I think for now I'm going to go ahead and remove that light bulb and let this run at normal voltage for a while and uh, make sure everything is running at the proper voltage all of them are adjustable with these potentiometers here and uh, I'll go ahead and put a signal into it well there's definitely still something wrong because after running for a few seconds it blew the fuse for the plus 15 volts which also shut down the plus 158 so they must work together uh, fuse uh, none of the other fuses blew just the plus 15 and when I replaced it with my spare 
it worked for a few seconds again it had all my voltages back and then it popped it again so something's breaking down as soon as it starts uh, warming up after a couple seconds but I'm gonna have to get some more fuses before I can go any further and once I do I'm gonna start unplugging these boards I've got the two deflection boards and the high voltage board and that um, the TTL board up top that I can unplug and see if the problem goes away if it still blows the fuse then I'll know that the problem is on this board itself and at least I know from having it powered up that for that short time that the CRT is good and the high voltage transformer is good I ended up pulling this board back out because it appears to be right here in the power supply circuit itself I disconnected everything else and it still blew the fuse as I was bringing it up on the variac and in fact I was monitoring the current and it was at 400 milliamps before I even had half the rated line voltage going in so something is going on and I'm pretty sure it's right in the 15 volt circuit itself not anything um, farther down and the IC is right here I'm pretty sure that's a regular old 7815 linear regulator with a different part number on it and I'm suspecting this Zener diode here or one of these two little caps because there's really not much in this circuit uh, from there it goes to these through these dropping resistors and goes into the 5 volt regulator which is a simple shunt regulator but I'm getting about 60 ohms of DC resistance between the plus 15 line and ground even with the board removed out of the out of the assembly and that 15 volt regulator is right here it's blowing this fuse and um, you know really there's not a lot a lot here there's a Zener diode for the 5 volts there's a Zener diode on the output side of the 15 volts and this capacitor here so it's gonna be this IC or something right in here I'm all but certain this schematic is very hard to read and it's also confusing because it looks like that says F1 and that's that's not the same numbering if I go let's see where is it on this manual if I go up to uh, 73 76 where did it go yeah right here here's another main power supply board and this one the fuse numbers actually match up to what my board has but the circuitry is quite a bit different it shows a uh, transistor F2, F1, yeah see this this is like a newer type of circuit where it's got the regulator IC and a current pass transistor and this is not what's on my board from what I can tell let's see yeah low voltage power supply that's what the other page says too so I'm pretty sure I have the first version that I looked at because that's where all the, the, you know, I ohm everything out and that's where the traces are going and the fuse numbers are correct on, or, uh, but this one's got the, the right fuse numbers, so it's a little bit confusing, but nonetheless, I'm going to start pulling some components out and see if I can find something that's leaky or shorted on that uh, 15 volt output circuit there, because I'm kind of running out of, uh, running out of possibilities here. Well, I'm all but certain I found the culprit. I think it's the uh, regulator IC itself. And now I'm pretty suspicious because you notice how those silicone insulator pads are stuck to that. And on the other ones, they weren't. They just fell right off. Which, by the way, these are likely not original. Somebody's probably put these in here at one point because I don't think the factory would use these, nor would they double stack them on here like this but 
Yeah, that's a, that explains why this thing was running until I brought the voltage up to a certain point because this IC was very leaky. The ground, the uh, ground pin and output pins are darn near completely shorted together, but not quite a dead short. So that's why I still was getting voltage on the output pin, and this thing actually started working until I brought the line voltage up all the way and it would just keep blowing the fuse which is on the input side of this regulator and um, you know now that I pulled that IC out I don't have an, any more uh, low resistance path on the output side so I think everything else is okay and I'm really hoping that I have one of these laying around otherwise I'm gonna have to make a parts order for one stupid little IC alright let's try this again <clears throat> found a brand new one in my parts bin Got it all mounted with new insulators. The yellow meter is connected in line with the fuse. Never use your meter as the fuse. Always put it in line because for one you don't want to damage the meter and for two the meter can probably take more juice than what the uh, circuit can in a lot of a lot of times. Like in this case the meter is rated at two amps. You know, but that's all this bridge rectifier is rated for, so Without this fuse, if something goes wrong, that new rectifier is going to go boom and maybe some other stuff as well. But the meter on the right is connected to the plus 15 test point. So hopefully this time when I bring this thing up, it will actually work. Another thing I want to make sure is that the intensity knob is turned down because I don't want to burn a hole in the middle of the phosphor. Okay. much better so far it's only using a hundred milliamps a lot better than the 450 it was at by this point in time let's just go ahead and take it right up yeah I'll leave it at about 112. 14.92, 170 milliamps. And there's my spot. Awesome. Now, got it right at 120. I'm going to let it sit there and run for a little bit, turn the intensity back down and uh, if it holds up then I can finally put a signal into it. I am disgusted with myself and how long it took me to fix this doggone thing but uh, I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't think straight till I had my coffee and was in the right mindset. It was really a simple problem but I uh, wonder what else what else can this thing do? Intensity. Right. Okay. There's the illuminated CRT. Now this this thing is actually pretty cool. I think it can store. You know, of course, back then stuff like this didn't have actual memory in it. There's a mesh inside the CRT that stores whatever trace is drawn by the electron beam, and it stores it in that mesh behind the phosphor. And I really want to try this thing out. See, and that's, I have the dot completely turned down right now. You can see if I turn it up, it starts to appear. And the camera makes it look a lot brighter than it actually is. I've got that dot so it's barely visible uh, in person. And man, that thing is sharp as a tack. So. Turn that back down. If I put this on conventional, it just turns off that uh, mesh and I get my dot. And all I'm going to be doing with this thing is conventional mode, probably 99% of the time. Monitoring the current here 170 milliamps on that. 500 milliamp fuse. The hardware store didn't have 375 milliamps, but 
To be honest, the 500 is probably fine in this application because these new bridge rectifiers are good for up to two amps, where the original ones were, I think, less than less than one amp, 500 milliamps or something like that. So we should be good to go. All right, finally I can mess around with this thing. Uh, I'm putting a sine wave into the x-axis amplifier right now and that's working okay. It's hard to hold the camera steady like this. It's, I got it behind my back right now, but I'll turn up the uh, right channel here. There we go. I've got sine wave. Here we go. All right. See if I can find one of those waveforms that's designed to draw graphics on an oscilloscope and give this thing a test. Alright, let's try the uh, U-scope sound file here. Pretty neat how you can draw graphics with nothing more than two audio channels. It's actually a lot sharper in person than the camera is picking up. Maybe I've still got it too bright. That is freaking cool. Can turn the persistence way up and it basically just stores everything and then you turn the persistence all the way down of course it's just like it's uh, directly in but so I can write store and it'll maintain that last waveform on the screen go back to write gotta turn the intensity down Yeah, let's try this store. Yeah, check that out. That's cool. And store. That is so awesome. Go back to right. Turn that persistence down. And wait for something cool to come up. Store right. Yeah, it's hard to hard to catch it. All right, let's see if I can catch something cool with the uh, oscillophone sound file here. That's pretty neat. Turn the uh, persistence up and it really slows down the write speed. Like kind of adds a delay to it. Store. Yeah, basically it just maintains the image. The, the camera really doesn't pick it up properly because it's too bright no matter what I do. This thing's like an Etch-a-Sketch when you have the persistence turned way up. You can use the X and Y position knobs to actually draw on the screen. That is so cool. I'm too easily amused. Press the erase button. Takes it back to normal. Bring my dot back up to the center. Put that back on normal mode. And I'm going to try to use my laser scanner computer to draw some more interesting pictures on the screen. And also test the blanking circuit. Well, for some reason I can't get my 
laser program to work on either display here so I mean I thought something was wrong with this thing or it was too slow but I get the exact same results on my scope here and I know I've used this before to test this program so I've got to have something set up wrong somewhere driving me crazy